Welcome back to The Fishing Report, your host Weston Smith. Today we're covering the final day of iCast with the best of show category. Also, Guggen is continuing their takeover with the introduction of four new soft plastic baits. A man gets his pinky bitten off by a lemon shark while trying to retrieve his hook and stick around till the end if you want to see how I made today's thumbnail. Let's go ahead and get right into it, everybody. So, starting things off with the best of 2022. Whew. And it looks like Coming in for, I guess this might be overall best of show winner, is the Packback P88MK Combo. And I had to take a look at what this was because I didn't know, um, I didn't know what it was. So I went ahead and Googled this thing right here. Check this out. This is from WideOpenSpaces.com. So the, the Packback PK88MK is essentially the Provider 88 Mobile Kitchen, a do-it-all cooler uh, from Backpack, from Packback. See, it even has me confused with that tongue twister of a brand name. Has officially won the 2022 iCast Best of Show Award as presented on Thursday, July 21st during the 64th annual iCast Fishing Industry Trade Show in Orlando, Florida. Then it talks a little bit about the brand, but I wanted to kind of cover the specs for you because it is actually quite intriguing. I'm curious on the price point. If any of y'all know it, please shout it out down in the comments because I haven't seen that just yet. But the features are plenty with the Provider 88 Mobile Kitchen serving a ton of uses for common for an uh serving tons of uses common for an angler who historically would require a lot of equipment, space, and time to take care of business. The MK stands for Mobile Kitchen as the cooler incorporates a vacuum sealer. Wow, folks, removable tabletop built-in cutting board and three separate chambers for storing food, drinks, bait, or other fragile items. Now, this is cool. I haven't seen anything like this in the past, and uh, I could see its uses, right? So let's continue here. Uh, it goes on to say, the Packback Fresh Lock 18-volt sealer is an asset in its own right and fits snugly inside one of the three compartments of the P88MK when not in use. Most importantly, the P88MK brings all of these items into the woods and onto the water, ensuring you'll keep any and all meat as safe and fresh as possible. Kind of sounds like a game changer. I'm starting to see how this thing won. Best of show. When the award was announced, the Packback website still lists the Provider 88MK on Kickstarter and plans to begin a larger rollout uh, and plans to begin a larger rollout are on the horizon. Okay, so this thing's looking pretty dadgum crazy. I haven't checked out the Kickstarter. I'm curious to see what pricing might be in the future, but overall, uh, what a crazy little uh, invention out here. So the Packback has won Best of Show, but as we as scroll down here, you can see category winners. And so let's just cover these real quickly. Uh, unfortunately, if you click these links, and you'll see, I'll try real quick, all it does is kind of pull up an image of the product itself, and it doesn't give any further description or explanation. And so I was able to find some on a few of the top products here, okay? So we're actually going to cover that. But uh, the ones that I could find extra information about. Otherwise, you're just going to see here the category winners. So for novelties and wellness, it is the Garmin Qu uh, Quadics 7 smartwatch. Boating accessories, you've got a new uh, deluxe aerator by Frable Recharge is what that one's called. So boats and watercraft boat, B-O-T-E, actually won with a new pedal drive paddle board. Uh, I guess you could call it. Maybe it's going to be considered a kayak. But anyways, this is the Boat Rock'em Gator Shell Plus Apex Pedal Drive paddleboard i guess <laughs> it looks pretty sick i did see some stories from some of my uh buddies out there at icast and it looks quite legitimate i would uh, really like to get one of these and test them out on the water as far as footwear goes we've got aftco coming in with their ankle deck boot over here and so you've seen these i mean they're gaining popularity they're some of my favorites for like the average pond hopper if you don't have a set of these boots you got to go out and get them you know you're just walking through thick grass you got all those pests in the summertime you got uh in the wintertime your feet you're just going to be getting soaked shoes i mean so the pond hoppers uh you know trying to walk out into some shallow water these things are an absolute dream not talking about this specific brand because i haven't worn these ones here but just uh this style shoe okay because i have worn the uh, devon has some tough branded ones i think i had got the oh my goodness what's the popular ones oh help me out y'all goodness gracious okay so i forgot the popular branded ones guggen's coming out with some here real soon and so uh yeah we've definitely have loved this style of boot here at the top right under the category winners i'm gonna think of that brand because it's not tough <clears throat> All right, blank and ice fishing. The category goes to Garmin Live Scope Plus Ice Fishing Bundle. 
that's pretty cool. I know I went out ice fishing in Texas with Peric. That video was wildly popular because really you can never ice fish in Texas. It was part of that snow apocalypse we had uh, the other year. And we just kind of took a cart with the live scope transducer out. But this is looking like a nice portable all in one bundle. So that's pretty cool. I wear, you got the Bejo, Bajo, I'm not, I'm mispronouncing this sunglasses, but anyways, uh, the Roca model, it looks like, has one best of show. Lifestyle apparel for women, you've got the women's Reaper soft shell jacket, I'm going to call it, for the, I'm just going to breeze through some of these categories, of course, some apparel items. So you can see you've got the Coco Boardies board shorts over here, warm weather technical apparel, Sims fishing products, Solar Flex guide cooling hoodie. Okay, is that just like the material it's made with? I mean, surely this isn't like something that actually cools. Okay, cold weather technical apparel by Aftco. You got the Barricade Rain Suit Acid Camo Colorway. So I think Acid Camo is the name of the color. Soft and hard coolers. We talked about that best of show overall winner. E-Electronics, you've got the uh, Marine Electronics Mega Live Imaging Target Lock. So I'm a little unfamiliar with it. I'm gonna have to do a little more research on that. But again, a couple of these items, I do have further descriptions and we can talk about more. For cutlery, hand pliers and tools, you've got the Bubba Saltwater Multiflex Filet Knife. And we've used some products from Bubba. They've all been fantastic. So I'm sure this thing is definitely a valuable tool for y'all looking for a saltwater filet knife. Uh, and then, then we've got the Fraybill Witness Way Net. Okay, so I, I was looking at one of these for trout because I had seen some folks, and these are really cool too. It's kind of a different category. They're usually smaller nets, but I had seen specifically folks that fish in New Zealand. I follow uh, Trout Fishing NZ is his uh, channel name. And or is it Trout Hunting NZ? I feel so bad. <laughs> Anyways, our favorite uh, New Zealand trout fishing YouTuber who we follow, he uses this net, or in some cases has in the past. It's a small net, and it's almost like the weighing scales you might see at the grocery store, right? Where if you have that trout or that bass or whatever it would be in your net, it just kind of pulls that lever down, and you can see in pounds uh, how much it actually weighs. So that is really cool. So basically, this is a net where you can check the weight of the fish as well, right? So it really applies to certain species, maybe saltwater things you wouldn't be holding on to. Uh, maybe it's a way to weigh your bass. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be big in bass fishing, but anyways, it's a weigh net. So you can see where you might uh, have a use for that. Kids Tackle, you got the Sims Fishing Products Tributary Waders. And for tackle management, the category winner is uh, the Plano Edge Frog Box. I saw a little bit of criticism from this because apparently this box right here claims to hold 30 frogs and some folks are like, well, I don't keep 30 frogs on my boat deck, right? <laughs> and you might fall into that category too. Plenty of folks have one or two favorite frogs. They put them in their tackle box. They break them out when they need them. Otherwise, why do I have this big old box of plastic frogs? But for the tournament anglers out there, for the folks that have all their frogs, I do see the use because uh, ba essentially it just looks like a bunch of pins where you kind of hook your frogs onto and you keep up to 30 of them in the box. But you know, I, I like the white belly frog sometimes. I like the black belly frog sometimes. I like the bullfrog pattern sometimes. And that really covers most of the range for me. I, I don't really throw a chartreuse bellied frog often. Uh, that bullfrog pattern kind of resembles it, but, but hear me out. So that covers like walking frogs. So that's already four, right? Different color schemes and walking frogs. Well, what if I want the popping frogs in my favorite colors too? Cause on that day, I feel like maybe it's just a little bit more chop from the wind. I want that popping. I want more of that disturbance. I want more drawing power. Well, then I got to have my favorite colors and all the poppins. And what happens when, when the frog is hitting and you want that color because that's what they like? Well, then you got to have two of them on the boat because what about your co-angler? What about my wife, Devin? We're fishing the John boat. We got to have two of everything, right? Because <laughs> if it's the bait that's working that day. And so I can see how quickly you would accumulate 30 frogs in a box, especially if you're talking about throwing out the micro frogs for more bites. Um, there's different size frogs out there, folks. Some of them, you keep the legs long if they're going to be more stationary, kind of have some secondary action. And some of you, you shorten up the legs because you want that walk. Anyways, now we're going on a tangent, but the point is I could see how a frog box might play a role on your boat. So you got that terminal tackle, you got Z-Man fishing products, uh, diesel eye jig heads. You know, I, who's to say what's a whole lot different from a lot of other jig heads out there. This one does look great. Um, but yeah, so that's the one that, <laughs> that took the category right there. So there's obviously something about it. Custom tackling components, I don't even know what that is, so I'm going to leave that to y'all to tell me. We got the uh, spider wire winning the fishing line category, so Dura Braid, high-vis yellow. I might have to 
grab some of that and slap it on a new Guggen Squad black spinning combo when I get it or something because I'm, I'm quite curious. Uh, so anyways, we got Spider Wire winning the fishing line category. Now this one right here, we're able to break down a little bit further. We did find some information thanks to a website we're going to credit here in a moment. This is the Berkeley Power Bait Power Stinger. And uh, it looks like an awesome swim bait, right? But there's a little bit more to it. So we're going to co- we're going to cover that one here in just a moment. Same thing with the Berkeley Slobber Knocker. I was able to find a little bit more information on that guy right there. And I was curious after uh, kind of mentioning it in a previous video covering some iCast products before we realized it had won a best of show category in the hard lures department of freshwater. So now we've got a little bit more to expand on today. And I know y'all were commenting about that saying it looked good. So, so stick around for a second. Saltwater soft lures. It goes to the Z-Man fishing products kicker crabs and then in the saltwater hard lures you've got the uh the live target live shrimp and we were talking about how realistic that thing looks like and and you can see how they've even got a weight there on the bottom of it so if you want to get way down there deep where those fish are at then uh, you have the opportunity to do that with the live target live shrimp now Bull Bay Tackle Company uh, took the win in fly fishing, okay, with the Banshee Fly Rod here, and I didn't, I wasn't able to find too much more information about it. I'm sure y'all could link in the uh, description, help some folks out that are looking for information from my fly homies out there, but uh, that one took best of show there, and for the freshwater rods, now this is surprising, this is surprising, okay, well, we got the Pistol Grip St. Croix Rod, okay, it's the Legend Tournament Bass Rod really funny with that long handle again i thought okay maybe this is that swim bait dedicated rod and those big bass aren't going to pull it out of your hand because now you've got that extra firm grip on there i could see where that plays a role but then also it talked about how this rod is going to be in so many different size offerings so maybe some of them are with that pistol grip i keep calling it and some of them are not but they didn't make it sound like just a swim bait dedicated rod, which shocked me because it seems like that is where it would make the most sense. So again, y'all are going to have to help folks out in the comments. We're going to have to have some back and forth here. Feel free to give your opinion on how this uh, St. Croix won the freshwater best of show category. Uh, I, I like it. I'm not saying I don't like it. What I'm saying is it's uh, it's very interesting. Okay, So saltwater rods, ugly stick comes in with the carbon inshore rod. For rod and reel combos, we've got Shimano. No, probably no shocker. With the, it sounds like it's the Spheros SW combo. And I don't even really remember covering too much of that on the rod and reels uh, the other day. But needless to say, that won the category. So I did see this though. The Hardy Fortuna Regent Saltwater Fly Reel. Now that one took the cake for the fly reels. Pretty prestigious win, I'd say. Two, you got all the folks in the fly world probably loving that right there. I'd love to hear your takes on it because I haven't fished any Hardy. I think the brand is Hardy, or is it Hardy? And then this is the Fortuna Regent. I think that's what it is. So Hardy brand won there. Uh, I'd love to hear more feedback from those of y'all that have used those products. Now, Shimano again coming in with another win in the freshwater reel category. Would you believe it? 50 years making these reels uh, plus probably, right? This thing, uh, when you factor in tax, you're going to be paying over a grand for this fishing reel. I mean, it should be something special. And so there you go. It's coming in for the dub, the Stella F. Okay, last but not least, of course, we've got the saltwater reel coming in hot. This is the Pin Fishing Authority spinning reel, and we were able to find some more information on this one, so we're going to be talking just a little bit more about it. We've got a couple pins ourselves. This is the stuff we take out there to the saltwater. We know it's sealed. Uh, it's going to last. It's got that reliability. So if you're looking for a great reel just to take on you know, vacations with you, if you're going to visit the salt destinations, or maybe you just live out there on the coast somewhere, and you want a quality spinning reel for pr- what's generally an affordable price, of course, they've got many cats categories and tiers, you might consider a pen. Uh, It's definitely what we've done in the past. Now, let's further our coverage. Let's further our coverage. But before we do that, folks, let me go ahead and tell you or remind you, I should say, that Carl's has an amazing sale going on right now, okay? They've got free Guggen Squad fishing rods. You can get a free $150 gold series rod with a 12-month subscription of Mystery Tackle Box. We talked about it yesterday. You know, we've been using Mystery Tackle Box since 2018. They send you different lures every single month to your door based on what species you want to catch. And now you can get a free $150 Guggen Squad gold fishing rod for signing up for that subscription. Uh, also, you get a free Guggen Squad Green Series rod, $100 value, $100 plus, with the purchase of any $150 Guggen purchase, okay? So if you're spending $150 bucks in soft plastics, hard plastics, uh, the team even told me if you buy a Guggen Squad Gold Series rod and you want to just essentially get a buy one, get one free fishing rod, you can do that. So lots of free rods to go around at shopcarls.com, okay? 
uh, you got to go check that out and take advantage of the deals. Now, uh, before we further the coverage, actually check this out. So this man, just since it's right here in front of us, he got his finger bitten off, okay, <laughs> by a lemon shark. It's not funny, by the way. It's not funny, but the clip is definitely very viral. And look at you got homie in the background over here with his, uh, he's got his snorkel outfit going. I don't think that's the actual video. That's a photo. Here, here we go with the video, I think. So let's go ahead and play this for y'all. Oh my goodness, he's just trying to get his hook away from the shark. Don't oh. bite our boat. Don't bite our boat. Don't bite our boat. <laughs> so he's trying to get the hook. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yo. Uh, so that's originally posted by Reader Mandy, okay? Full credit. And then, of course, the repost comes from the dark side of nature. Uh, imagine you're just out there trying to retrieve your hook. You got the kiddos on board and you took it just one step too far. <laughs> you took it just one step too far and you got unlucky. That's unfortunate. Uh, we feel bad for Reader Mandy, but we had to post that for y'all in case you hadn't seen it because it is going around. It's making its way around the interwebs. Now, next up, we got our first full look really at a uh, Guggen Squad Black Series combo. Check this thing out. You've got the uh, the muscle, the muscle. I have not touched one of these things yet. I am excited to. We got the, um, what is this? The Black Series casting reel here. We've got that bullfrog pattern, Guggen Squad Filthy Frog. And then uh, you got some uh, lopsided braid. You can see they made some casts and kind of retrieved it. It's on the left side of the spool. Get you some. That is by Mystery Tackle Box on the post. Thank you for coming in clutch with that right there. Uh, this was me trying to do some research on that uh, pedal drive or pedal driven boat board and I couldn't find too much so uh, send me some links on Instagram and I will uh, reference that and cover it more in depth but I couldn't find much on it. So now we're getting into those best of show winners real quick before we cover how we make our thumbnail, specifically today's thumbnail. I'm going to do it right in front of y'all. It's going to be uh, an interesting learning experience for some of you folks who are wondering how these creators make their thumbnails. And I know a lot of you watching are actually creators yourselves. You've got your own fishing channels. I see it in the comments. And so I'd love to share uh, my insights and, and some value uh, with y'all on how you can improve your thumbnails. Should you think that the thumbnail today was good anyways, right? You might think it sucks. That's fine too. So we've got the, by the way, huge credit to thefishingwire.com. I tried to find information on a lot of these best of show winners and really the fishing wire is one of the few places I was able to find information. So big shout out to them. They've got some coverage on a few of those top products. We're just going to go through five of them quickly and then we're going to be talking about the thumbnails. Remember, we have chapters down below. So if you wanted to hit any specific portion of this video or previous or future fishing reports, you want to skip the stuff you don't care to see, I value your time, okay? Check the description, sometimes the pinned comment. You'll be able to skip to the exact segment you want. Okay, so we've got the Berkeley Power Stinger adding to their already stellar lineup of award winning soft plastics. Berkeley's newest power bait soft plastic, the Power Stinger, is sure to quickly become a favorite straight tail minnow style bladed jig trailer thanks to its unique design. So when I first saw this bait, I was thinking to myself, oh, that's just a swim bait that looks great for throwing on a weighted belly hook or you know, what have you, right? A big swim bait. Turns out it's a chatterbait trailer, okay? So we're gonna talk more about the size offerings and um, the pricing and we'll, and then give some final thoughts because I do have a couple thoughts on this thing. Featuring new patent pending honeycomb technology, the Power Bait Power Stinger offers additional swimming action when paired with a bladed jig that triggers fish to bite. The Power Stinger has a thick bait fish profile and a dense head that is durable and prevents tearing. Now, I do like how it's got that rounded nose, right? That flat rounded nose because that's what you want when you're pairing it up with those jigs. And they talked about that bigger body right there. So the bigger body up front means that skirts are going to kind of be getting pushed out a little bit more from your chatterbaits, your bladed jigs, right? And uh, what that's going to do is just bulk up that profile a little bit. So might get some bigger bites with something like this, but then there's more. A perfect match with the new Berkeley Slobber Knocker, which is, of course, the Berkeley um, bladed jig they just came out with. The st Power Stinger is available in both 3.5 inch and 4.25 inch with 12 standard colors and 4 HD colors to match any hatch. Now, I have to imagine that this right here is one of their HD colors, which may go for a premium, but I'm unsure. So, patent pending honeycomb technology, we just talked about this, uh, purpose built for bladed jigs, thick bait fish profile, we talked about how we like that for bladed jigs, uh, back and belly slots for accommodating a variety of rigging styles. Now, that is where it almost makes it sound more versatile and you'd throw it without being a trailer. Um, give me your thoughts down below. But I, you know, it, for me, I would like to throw something like this that looks so lifelike and realistic as a, uh, as a swim bait 
maybe in like the five, the six, the seven inch category, right? So that's that was kind of my take on it. At first, I was thinking, oh, this is a chatterbait trailer. Looks expensive for a chatterbait trailer. Sure enough, folks, it comes in at eight ninety nine for the three and a half and four point two five inch. And for the HD colors, it comes in at $9.99. Now, I wish they told us how many we're getting for that price point. It's making it sound like it could be individual. And if that's the case, uh, I'm, I'm going to pick up a couple. I want to see how they fish. And I think they're going to be very durable just based on the looks here. I think they're going to last and last and last unless that tail gets eaten off. But um, that would be that would be pretty expensive for me to purchase for a Chatterbait trailer. And uh, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Now, if it's a pack of two even right then that halves the price if it's a pack of three or four phenomenal but i'm kind of doubting that right so uh maybe some of y'all have those insights uh and so that covers that one right there now let's go over to the fly reel okay this is that hardy fortuna regent and it says ten thousand. so that's going to be your spool size right uh let me zoom in here just a touch i want to be able to make sure i can read that i want to make sure y'all if you're pausing this at home can actually read this stuff too so Already highly regarded by fly anglers worldwide, iconic fly fishing brand Hardy Fly Fishing made a huge splash this week at ICAST 2022 when the innovative Hardy Fortuna Regent Reel won the top award for best in category for fly reel and accessories and the event's new product showcase. Built to perform flawlessly under the most demanding saltwater conditions, the Hardy Fortuna Regent marketing fluff, marketing fluff, marketing fluff, up to 22 pounds of drag and wide arbor that picks up 14 and a half inches of drag in a single rotation. I don't know if they meant picks up inches of drag or inches of line, but I think they meant line. Anglers can fight big fish without missing a beat. Winning an iCast award validates the hard work, planning, research, and development that goes into creating a great fly reel. And this does look like a great fly reel. I, I'm curious to uh, try and fish one of these in the future. Maybe somebody's got one that they can uh, send our way for a little product review. I mean, that's a beauty, really and truly. Um, celebrating its 150th anniversary this year, the iconic Hardy brand holds this honor in high esteem. The Fortuna Regent is a uh, reel is a high performance saltwater reel with an ultra large arbor design that picks up 14 and a half inches of line with one rotation. So there, I think they fixed that typo up above. If that was a, in fact a typo, it has a carbon fiber multi pad disc drag system and a narrow spool. Profile. The Hardy Fortuna Regent starts at $750, so no doubt you can spend over a grand on this guy right here, but when you're in the world of fly fishing, uh, especially some salt water, a uh, high quality, uh, properly sealed, uh, well built <laughs> uh, reels and rods, you're going to be spending a pretty penny, and most folks uh, kind of have their one go to for kind of like the type of water they're fishing, right? And not necessarily the type of water, but the species they're targeting and, and the regions maybe that they're fishing. And so you don't really have eight fly reels on your boat deck oftentimes, right? You, it's not quite the same as casting. So you might even save money if you only are buying one or two combos versus how much we're spending on all this other gear. So that's more on the Hardy Fortuna Regent reel right there. Uh, next up, the Guggen Squad takeover over continues again this is straight from fishing wire major credit so we've got four new soft plastics coming out from the guggen squad y'all we're going to showcase those just a little bit more in depth uh, the photos here in just a second but um, continues its growth and dominance in freshwater fishing soft plastics thanks to its original best-selling baits such as the Bandito Bug. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know that thing's catching tanks across the country and around the world. It is probably one of the best baits to Texas rig. Uh, the Bandito Bug gets it done. I don't care if you're throwing it as a... It's, it's a chatterbait trailer. It's a jig trailer. It just... It just works. We know why it's a bestseller. Uh, Lunker Log and Mondo Worm. This year, the brand has spread its wings even further by introducing four new soft plastic bait bodies. Among these introductions include the, include the completely custom Slizzard Lizard. That's this guy right here. We've got a whole video on the lizard. Uh, if I can remember to, I'm going to link it down in the description, okay? Because that's one that we have fished prototypes of. We haven't fished the uh, production model. I think there's going to be a couple improvements, but we caught some great fish on the Slizzard Lizard. Then you've got the exceptionally innovative Happy Trailer. Now that one is going to be this guy right here, if I'm not mistaken. So that is going to be a bladed jig trailer as well. I did enjoy fishing it. We caught quite a few on it. We were only given like four of these in a few different colors. So we kind of had some wacky color schemes going on and they were still wreaking havoc. And they had a nice little kick uh, reminds you of some of those Gary Yamamoto uh, chatterbait trailers in the past as well. Just that, just enough kick off the tail end to get the job done, and uh, you're getting a big pack with those. So, 
do it all versatile love grub is another one check this guy out here that little grub bait is coming out love that color too that like plum color and a supremely special doob tube now if i was fishing for this would be a heavy hitter if i'm going for smallmouth on a regular basis i don't fish many tubes but when i do i prefer to fish a good high quality tube and that's exactly what this one's coming and looking like i like that there's tons of different individual legs so just more movement on the drop on the fall and, uh, and all those extra ribs are going to provide, of course, more water displacement as it's falling, meaning more vibration, more drawing power, simply put, okay? So that tube is going to be phenomenal. Now, the brand has grown exponentially in recent years, and with that growth comes the opportunity for breadth of assortment for spring 2023. You got to remember, not even that long ago, there was only like five Guggen baits, right? I remember the first one I ever fished was the Trench Hog, and that came out with, I believe, the Bandito Bug, the Lunker Log, the Kraken Craw, and probably another one that maybe it was the Mondo Worm. I think it was, oh, the, uh, what about the drop shot with the uh, dragon drop? So maybe those were like the original five or six, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, you'll let me know in the comments for sure. <laughs> but so this is all like brand spanking new, you know? Anyways, for spring 2023, Guggen Base will reach a total of 18 unique soft plastic bodies in varying sizes and enticing colorways. The most sought after from our customer base, consumer base, and the entry for the iCast new product showcase and soft plastic lures as the cleverly named Slizzard Lizard. The Lizard was designed from scratch by the Guggens and the House of Outdoors internal team with a goal in mind to create a unique body with as much action as possible. And action it has. You can swim that thing and it is looking like a dream. All right, what have we got? Thoroughly tested. Innovatively designed articulating joints create a unique up and down action, allowing the bait to move with ease. The lizard's tail reflects the design language of the extremely popular Mondo Worm. Its long uh, sickle style tail creates enticing action as it moves through the water, and that was absolutely the case in our testing. Another line extension for Guggen in spring 2023 includes a truly cutting edge trailer. The Happy Trailer features an industry leading concept for cutting plastic in multiple directions, giving it omnidirectional movement, and that's exactly what we saw. It was all over the place. It was, it was rather nice. Designed specifically to be used on the back of a bladed jig as a trailer, the bait functions equally as well on the back of any lead that can. So when they're saying any lead, any other like hard plastic that you would put that trailer on, okay, uh, that can benefit from a supplemental trailer. It its tail has check your rings. Look, we're making daily progress out here in the uh, in the world of fitness. I guess it says check your activity rings. Apple Watch says uh, it has. Its tail has a first-of-its-kind attribute as well. Divots in the center of the tail allows it to catch water as it moves, increasing water displacement and action. You can't beat it. Likely the most versatile addition to Guggen's portfolio is the Love Grub, a twin a twin tail style grub that can be fished just about any way you'd like to rig it after the massive success of the most recently launched blazing worm and let me tell you what have we caught some fish on the blazing worm that's been one of our favorites we've been burning through packs of those things and i'm like asking for more the fish love the blazing worm you gotta have it speed worms man holy smokes now where was i <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. We were uh, designed da, 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 da. <laughs> Now I've done lost myself. Okay. Of the recently launched Blazing Worm, the Love Grub mimics the Blazing's aggressive tail design and doubles up for maximum movement. Twin tails move in an oscillating action, enticing bites at any depth in the water column. So what it's saying is it's going to have that nice, elegant fall all the way down to the bottom, right? You're probably going to fish this as more of a finesse, lighter weight application, in which case it's got that slow fall. So what happens if those fish are up towards the surface and they're feeding on bait fish at the surface? What happens if they're chilling mid-column that day? What happens if they're down there on the bottom? Well, you're hitting them from all angles with that delectable slow fall and two oscillating tails on the way down, okay? So that is, uh, that's definitely gonna be a fish catcher. You can uh, count on that. You name the technique, Texas rig, weightless, buzz bait trailer, jig trailer, the list goes on, okay, folks? So the Love Grub is available in six unique natural colors to give anglers the most versatility possible out of a single soft plastic. We've only got a couple more products to cover here, y'all. But I'm excited about these right here. Very excited about these right here. And and I've said it three times now. Major shout out to the Fishing Wire because I haven't found much information like this on a lot of these products except for from y'all over there. So, uh, man, just <laughs> I don't know if there's a way y'all can subscribe to them if you want to kind of see some of the latest in fishing trends and, uh, and what's going on out there in the world of fishing. But it, it definitely deserves 
a uh, some sort of like email. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to see what's new, definitely see if there's an opportunity to subscribe. I see follow and like, but um, there we go. Subscribe down there at the bottom. I, I think we I think we've done it, y'all. If you want to read some of this information before I can even cover it, you've got the opportunity to do it. Now, last but certainly not least, the dube tube covers several bases from smallmouth finesse fishing to flipping for big largemouth. So there we go. I might be flipping the tubes here soon. That I just I just don't think about I just don't think about doing that often. I haven't had many folks show me this technique in the past. You know, I'm flipping I'm flipping the new punch. So I'm definitely going to try the tube. Offered in 12 colorways total and three distinct sizes. Interesting. I did not even know there was different sizes. The dube tube fills a void. Uh, our anglers have been requesting for a long time. So this is something to get excited about. I'm thinking this is going to be a huge hit in the north. I mean, sales are going to go through the roof. The two and a half inch three, the two and a half and three and a half inch models are offered in generally more northern colors for finesse smallmouth fishing. And the four inch is offered in its own color variants for pitching and flipping. I like that. Spam risk. Go away. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming the northern colors might be something like those morning dawns, uh, maybe just brighter colors, maybe a little flashy yellow, those pinks, um, things of that nature, right? Those smallies, they, 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 go, they go after the color. Now these largies, okay, kind of those natural colors, right? Those bluegill colors and patterns. I'm thinking that's what's going to be offered in the, in the four inch for pitching and flipping, which now I'm very excited to try with this bait. Unlike most plastic tubes on the market, the tentacles on the dube tube were uniquely engineered in CAD, so the geometry is more uniformly organic rather than simply cut randomly off of the mold. So that's a little over my head, but it sounds phenomenal. <laughs> Guggen will continue investing and innovating in the soft plastic lures category, always finding ways to break the mold and push its designs in new ways. You got to remember, we just talked about this. They're so new to the game and they're coming out with all this stuff. I cannot wait five years down the road, 10 years down the road, just being a part of this whole thing. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Guggen will have all these soft plastics available for view and discussion and House of Outdoors booth 4616. So y'all saw some of these if you were out there in Florida. You did see some of these. Now we've got one or two more to cover here. What do we got? We got the slobber knocker and we've got the saltwater reel by pen. So let's go ahead and cover the Berkeley slobber knocker. This is that new style chatterbait alternative. That's right, folks. It's a bladed jig. I'm very curious to see how this operates, right? Is there almost like a larger round piece in the center of this bait where that uh, blade can kind of go side to side or does it just go back and forth up and down? I, I want to fish this. Okay. So after the Berkeley Power Bait Gilly, many believe the team at Berkeley Labs would slow down. Instead, the team at Berkeley Labs doubled down and created the Berkeley Slobber Knocker and Berkeley Power Bait Power Stinger, which we just covered. A bladed jig combination to wreak havoc on bass around the country. So I'm kind of curious to fish this with uh, one of the Guggen bladed jig trailers as well, just because uh, that, that, that Power Stinger, it just doesn't look like as much of a, a bladed jig trailer, in my opinion, as a standalone swim bait. But of course, we talked about the uh, the life it might have a lot of life expectancy coming in at that larger price point thicker body so we're definitely curious about it compared to other bladed jigs on the market the Berkeley slobber knocker features an innovative through head design that is completely unique to other bladed jigs I've never seen it before don't don't know if y'all have seen anything like it but it is brand new after countless hours spent testing on and off the water. Berkeley Labs scientists fine-tuned this unique design that not only offers a constant I'm sorry consistent vibration, but is also perfectly suited to come through heavy cover while staying engaged. That would be something different in the game of bladed jigs, okay? Because oftentimes that blade is out there in front and somehow, some way you get grass caught up on it. I, I know grass is going to get caught on this. There's just no way around it. But being that it is like right there attached to the head, I think it might do better than most everything out there. Uh, getting through heavy cover while staying engaged, as it says, right? Yeah, I don't think you're going to stop that vibration as quickly as you would with other bladed jigs because, you know, if that blade is out front and you get a little grass on there, then you just you just notice you're reeling and you no longer feel the vibration through your rod tip on those chatterbaits. Now, with this guy right here, with it being inside the head, right, not in, out in front, I'm thinking that vibration might, like, just still even cut through as you're going through cover. Now, that could lead to some missed bites potentially, right? Uh, all positive so far on this thing, but like, let's say it is vibrating and you do have a little extra weight. Maybe a fish kind of grabbed it and it's kind of swimming towards you and you don't realize it's a bite because 
normally when you're fishing the bladed jigs, you would get that kind of pause where there's no vibration anymore, right? Um, and maybe not. So you might assume, okay, I got some grass on there, but I'm working through it. Maybe it's a fish and you uh, neglect to set the hook in that split second and you lose a fish because of it. But I'm thinking this is going to be uh, uh, fantastic. So Backed by science, the slobber knocker features a signature hand-tied Berkeley silicone skirt infused with power bait flavor to help ensure that every fish that bites will hold on longer. Here's a secret too, folks. If your baits don't have a scent, you can go out and you can buy scent, okay? So if you, uh, and if you do have something, uh, let's see, maybe the water clarity is no bueno, right? It's just not good. You can go ahead and you can add scent to those baits. Just one more way for those fish to key in on them. So something to consider. Uh, whenever you're out there and you just want to add, uh, aside from flash on a spinner bait, maybe you got a trailer, right, with the little swim bait on the back there. I know we're taking a break from this topic here at the moment, but you can get that scent and you can just add it to the plastic. One more way to help you catch fish. Adding to their already stellar lineup, um, what did I miss up there? Oh, to ensure that every fish that bites will hold on longer, helping anglers put more fish in the boat. Okay, we all love more fish in the boat. No one wants less fish in the boat. Adding to their already stellar lineup of award-winning soft plastics, Berkeley's newest power bait soft plastic, the Power Stinger, is sure to quickly become a favorite straight-tailed minnow-style bladed jig trailer <laughs> thanks to its unique design. Featuring new patent-pendant honeycomb technology, the Power Bait Power Stinger offers... Okay, we already talked about that. Um, yeah, we already talked about that. Okay, pin. Last but not least this thing is it looks beautiful like this looks like this looks like a ferrari this looks like a brand new mercedes benz i don't know like just the the curvature like I, i'm really liking this um the the look i no doubts this thing is going to be a machine i'm pretty sure it comes in at like five or six hundred bucks okay so this is probably one of their you know higher end reels right here and again let me zoom in so if y'all want to pause this hopefully you can kind of get a better visual of the description here. The Pen Authority, a new premium reel series in the pen fishing lineup, celebrates a huge win for pure fishing with their iCast 2022 new product showcase win, dominating the top brands in the saltwater reel category. Pen Fishing is known for designing durable fishing reels that the avid angler can rely on to work hard and get big game to the boat. And we are uh, absolutely living proof of it. We've done plenty of videos with our pen reels and, uh, and we have had this experience. So you can rely on them. The Pen Authority sets the new standard for best-in-class saltwater fishing reels and was designed to bring a more refined and powerful reel to the brand. I like the sound of that. Built for maximum performance. This reel features the best of pen fishing technologies, plus features never seen uh, never seen before in a pen reel. The hardcore angler, sorry, I'm trying to get this yellow thing to pop up because it was kind of nice having that. Yeah. The hardcore angler who spends serious time on the water and is looking to perfect their craft will find this reel answers to any demand. I don't know why this text is all of a sudden acting different, but this reel is a reflection of an amazing product team that expects nothing less than superior products. Um, said C. The pen brand has spent several years perfecting their technologies, and we are pleased to deliver a reel that levels up our offerings. I think the anglers who have tested this reel won't be surprised by this one. The pen authority is truly a refined premium reel that delivers smooth and powerful for, uh, powerful performance. I think the problem is my bank account. It's just going to suffer, right? I think the problem is we want to all these, and, and they're, you know, you buy a couple top tier items, top uh, priced category items, and you're, you, you your bank account is not happy. The Pen Authority boasts an impressive IPX8 rated sealed body and spool that allows the reel to be submerged one meter, about three feet, right, for 30 minutes, which tell me if you've ever done that before because I highly doubt it, but apparently it can handle it, okay? So it stands up to the most extreme saltwater exposure, spray and wash without suffering water intrusion. So here's what I want to know. How many of y'all fishing, you know, some of these reels that are geared towards saltwater have had issues, okay? Have had them get like very clunky because I hear all of, every reel is going to tell you how good it is as far as saltwater and the corrosion and all these things. But who's had a bad experience with saltwater reels? Please let me know down in the description. And it's not me really, it's helping inform our viewers, right? Everyone who's, who's watching, uh, we could really... Uh, like is a what if this hundred dollar reel you go out and you spend major bucks a hundred bucks on some hundred dollar reel that you want to take out there and go fishing in the salt and then it just breaks down on you you end up spending five hundred bucks on five of those things before you even spent five hundred dollars one time on a quality reel like this okay so if you've had a bad experience with some reels in salt water but 
specifically ones that are rated for salt water, okay? If it's not rated for salt water, you've done a bad thing. <laughs> but if it's rated for salt water, I want to hear anything that has not lasted for you folks in the uh, comments, please. It'd be a huge help to everybody. Now, uh, where were we? Using the best materials on the market, the CNC gear technology features a stainless steel gear train and pinion gear and is designed to be better supported overall to allow for long-term durability. It is machined out of a solid piece of metal, ensuring exact alignment, smooth long-term performance, and maximizing torque when trying to get that last wind and a hard fighting fish. The full metal body, side plate, and rotor keeps gears protected and eliminates flex in the reels frame, ensuring rigidity under the heaviest loads. The level line slow oscillation system, which I don't know exactly what that is, produces a tight line lay for improved casting and reduced occurrences of wind knots. Now those wind knots, they suck. <laughs> if you know what a wind, you, you cast and like the line's kind of doing its thing in the wind and then all of a sudden you, you're reeling and you got a knot in your line and you probably worked hard on setting up your leader knot. You probably got your custom set up right for fishing the salt and here you go with a wind knot and now it's like your casts are affected if, if not even uncastable and your reeling, it becomes affected if you choose to like leave the knot there for a little while <laughs> and just be lazy about the whole thing. So if you're telling me that this thing can cut out some wind knots, now I'm ready to spend the money. <laughs> so with a 12 plus one bearing system for smooth retrieve uh, and additional bearings in the spool that lends support for the drag when under heavy pressure, a lot of talk about catching big fish and how it can accommodate you there. So I, I'm thinking you're not gonna ever have a problem reeling in a fish if you're getting one of the bigger sizes of this reel here. When the hammer slams down, the slammer drag system with Dura Drag offers maximum drag pressure and features silky smooth carbon washers which eliminate hesitation even under extreme drag settings. The washers are improved. The washers are impregnated with a phenolic bonding agent to reduce wear. All right, so you got washers covered with something. This combination brings the fight to any big game fish leaving zero power behind. The Authority Reel Super Spinner far surpasses the durability and performance required and comes into the market with sizes ranging from 2,500, so that's a nice, that's a smaller size right there, to 10,500, making it the most durable, best in class reel on the market. Four high speed models are also available uh, 2,500, 4,500, 6,500, and 8,500. So if you're looking for that higher gear ratio, then you've got a few models to accommodate as well. Almost everything, probably except for the, the largest size. So key features, we talked about all that. Now the price, $499, so $500, don't be fooled folks, to $600, available September 2022. That's right around the corner, folks. Start budgeting. Good thing for this video, you wouldn't have even known, right? To learn more about the Pen Authority Reel and other new products, share this video and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, let's see what else we got on here. I told you I was gonna show you how to make a thumbnail, didn't I? We're gonna close this thing out in a different way than ever before, so check us out. I don't know how it's gonna work with this cam bubble up here, but I'm pretty stoked, okay? So I've got this folder over here. It's titled Thumbnail Example, and within it, I've got the ingredients for today's juicy, juicy thumbnail. So I've been using this one in the past couple iCast videos. It's just a picture I took at a lake not too long ago that I'm gonna drag down here as my background image and my start to this whole thing. This is Pixelmator Pro, folks. This is the poor man's Photoshop right here. This is what I use. Now, first things first, what am I gonna do? I am going to blur this thing because it is gonna be a very distracting background. But the point is you're kind of getting the, the idea of this is a, a fishing, this is fishing content right here, right? We're on the lake, we're on the water. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna hit the F key and that is going to, uh, oh, I'm already actually on that. Uh, so maybe, anyways, hitting the F key brings up this add effect <laughs> icon over here. And so I guess it was already pulled up, but I'm going to blur it by adding a Gaussian blur. So if I click it, boom, Gaussian blur. And now I'm just gonna increase what's called the radius, but essentially it's just like the, you know, the uh, level of it, right? So I'm gonna bring that to, let's call it right, hmm, let's call it right here. We, we want it to be known as like kind of trees in the background and everything, but I'm gonna blur the background, maybe even a little bit less. We'll see how this looks on that. We can adjust this later on. So now we've got our background image, okay? Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna add in a few of the items that were best of show items. And I, and I haven't made this one ahead of time, so this is just like off the cuff right here. Now I'm going to add this iCast uh, 2022 image, okay? 
So I've got this iCast 2022 PNG that I downloaded from uh, old faithful Google, okay? I need to go up here to my arrow so I can just move this thing around. I'm gonna try and uh, imitate those first couple I made. So this was very large, right? And I kind of had it just right over here off to the side. Remember your timestamp, whenever people are looking at your, uh, whenever people are like scrolling through YouTube and viewing the videos and everything, there's like the how long is the video, the timestamp kind of down in that bottom right segment you'll hear, uh, see, you'll see right here where the mouse is. And so you, generally speaking, you'd want to leave that open uh, or, or like it can, of course you can have stuff there, but uh, maybe not text, right? So if I was to put this iCast 2022 down here at the bottom, you're not going to see 2022 in some cases because that timestamp is there. Okay. So that's something to think about with your thumbnails. So uh, we can size this up later right there off the bat. That's pretty good. Now, now let's go and grab another image here. We're going to go with the, uh, we'll, we'll start with this shot of me and I can just show you. So this is a, a PNG that I have saved and created because what I have done is previously I've used this image of me, right? This was a, a originally used in a five, in the five things we hate about our bass boat video. Okay. So it was originally just a picture of me that I then went and grabbed a selection tool of. I selected all around uh, me, and then of course I added this blue outline. And so now I saved it as a PNG, that way I can use it on a regular basis. And I've done this with quite a few different um, logos, quite a few, like, like this iCast logo, it's ready to go, right? So now it's saved. So I've done this with a few different images of me with different, you know, holding rods in my hand, things of that nature, okay? So let's say we're gonna use this today. I don't know if we're going to, because I think this real estate is really gonna be taken up by hopefully some of those best of show items. Um, so, so we've got a good start here. Now I'm gonna add text, okay? But I've been doing something different with my text than a lot of people have been doing lately. So I add the text, I kind of drag this out, otherwise sometimes it like takes it into multiple lines instead of just staying uh, as one line. I'm not making any sense right now, but you'll see. Okay, so what am I wanted to type here? Best of show. And I don't need to put 2022 because that's down there at the bottom. So I want it to take up as much space as possible really here at the top. So I'm gonna adjust how many pixels it is. And so you can see it adjusting the size as we do this here. So it only goes to 288 pixels, I guess. And I almost want it even bigger. So I'm gonna manually adjust it. So I'm gonna put like, uh, I'm just gonna guess here and say 325. Oh, that's not 325, that's huge. Okay, let me select this. Let me go to pixels. Let me select that. 325, why is it not adjusting? What am I missing here? There we go, it adjusted after the fact. Okay, let's do that one more time. Let's try 400 now, because it's almost where I want it, but I, I think we need a little, a little larger. There we go, I hit enter and then that worked. Okay, so best of show, but now it's white and I want it to have a little bit of color and uh, specifically the same color as this 2022 because it's what I've done in those past couple thumbnails. It worked out really well and I'm even gonna give it a gradient, okay? So it's gonna like fade from orange on one side and it's gonna go to white on the other side. I don't see a lot of people doing this, so definitely drop a thumbs up for that right there. I'm gonna show you exactly how we get it done. So let's move this around to where we want it by uh, moving me over here first. So let's, let's grab this best of show text if I can and let's scoot it over here to the corner okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, F and that is going to be that is going to allow me to be able to add an effect to this okay and um, so I'm going to add an effect and it's going to be a fill I'm going to fill this with color okay this layer with color and I want it to be a gradient fill that's what I just mentioned a moment ago so we're going to grab that gradient fill and now you can see that we've got this gradient going across best of show right now that's fine but I'm actually going to do a black uh, almost drop shadow on here and I'm going to show you how you do that so I, I don't want the uh, the text to be black because then that drop shadow doesn't look as good also I want this to really stand out and pop some bright colors uh, you see I like to do that in my thumbnails a lot of popular creators a lot of pop and color okay so I'm over here now on the sec uh, selection I'm sorry, the settings for the gradient. And I'm going to click the black color off to the left there. I'm going to click that. And I want this to be a different color. Now, I want it to be a very specific color, right? So you can, you can change your text color. See, now we went green. Here we went red. And you can see how it changes there. But I want it to be specific. So I'm going to click this eyedropper tool. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to grab that orange. Boom. Now, you might say, Weston, I can barely read that. And that is the truth. That's not, um, this is, we haven't applied our drop shadow yet, but this is exactly what I want. And I already know because I've tested it. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to, uh, so what I need to do next, and I don't quite understand this, but I've got to, I've got to go to this layer where it says best of show and I've got to convert it into pixels. I, I don't know why, but you got to convert it into pixels if you want to do this next uh, little tidbit here. So 
convert to pixels. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate it. So essentially we've got two text layers on top of each other here with that best of show now. So on the bottom layer, okay, I'm gonna click on that bottom layer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit F. So that's gonna be the effects. I'm gonna add an effect and I'm gonna add a color fill, okay? So it's already over here on fill. I'm gonna hit color fill. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the color of this text underneath the text and I'm gonna change it to black. So now the text under this text is black. I can show that to you by going to the move tool and we can move this top layer, okay? We can move this top layer. See, now we've got two layers of text. One is black and one is not. Now I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo and I'm gonna do that twice. So now the text is back where it was. It just eliminates those moves I just made. Now I'm gonna go back and select the bottom text layer because that's the one I'm adjusting. We know that it's black, but what I wanna do is blur it out to make a drop shadow. There's probably an easier way to do this, but this is very fast for me whenever I'm not just doing this and explaining. So I'm gonna go back to um, effects by hitting F. I'm gonna add an effect. We've already made it black, but we're gonna blur that black with the Gaussian blur, same way we did with uh, the background image. And so now you can see there's a little bit of a blur there. There's a little bit of a drop shadow, but I wanna increase the radius or essentially the effect. So I'm gonna drag this out um, to what looks good, okay? So you can see it gets like crazy if you go all the way to the edge. It's like too narrow if you're way down here. I've been, I've been mixing it up on all mine. Let's just call it, hmm. This looks pretty good, somewhere around 30. So we've got it right there. Actually, I might go a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit more. I'm gonna go about 40 on the radius, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate that image or that layer of text blur because I, I don't think it pops enough, okay? I want that orange and that white to really stand out. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate. Boom, you can see it's way more popping. I'm gonna see if one more time is too much. So I'm gonna do one more layer. I actually like that. Look at how much it pops now. All I've done is I've duplicated that drop shadow layer. Um, twice. And so now we've essentially got four layers of text on top of each other, right? We've got the original with that gradient fill on the custom color, and we've got the drop shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all those text layers, okay? And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to merge them, okay? I'm going to merge them together. Uh, is it because my cam bubble's in the way? I think so. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to merge them together. Now, folks, they are all one layer. So what does that mean? I can now move this best of show text around and they all move together, even though technically that's four layers of text, right? So I'm just going to hit command Z because I want it to be back where I had it. And now we've got best of show. I cast 2022 with that lovely gradient. You got me there in the front looking like a goofball and we're here to add more folks. We're here to add more. Would you believe it? So let's go ahead and back out of here and let's add a few of these images like uh, that reel's going to be complex. Let's do the, uh, let's do the goo, uh, let's do the slobber knocker. Maybe this fish should be easy. The fish. We'll do the fish first. The Berkeley thing. Okay. Back to full screen. Now we need to size this thing up. Uh, we'll assume that that might be good. Where are we going to put him? We're, we'll hide him somewhere. Oh, we might do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this white background now. There's a lot of ways to do that, but I think this thing has a smart erase feature somewhere. So if I click the eraser, it just pulls up the eraser and I would be like erasing it and you can see the layer behind it, right? Don't want to do that. Command Z. So I'm going to go over here to the eraser and I'm going to go to the smart erase. Now that is going to smartly erase basically, um, whatever I, s oh no. Pause. Ooh, wow, I got scared there for a second, y'all. We lost our cam bubble. This is the first time I've used the Sony cam off to the side here as the webcam instead of using the one on the computer. Um, so hopefully that didn't, that wasn't too intrusive. But anyways, what I was talking about is coming over here to the smart eraser. And once you've got the smart eraser selected, um, I need to move this cam bubble because it's not letting me click on it. Once I've got the smart eraser selected, now I can come over here and if I click, like kind of double click and drag, see it's going to kind of smartly erase everything that I'm kind of covering, okay? So I'm going to just try and erase as much white as possible and so we've done that. That is the smart eraser. That makes life so easy. It's just essentially erasing all the white there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna resize this a little bit because I want to kind of have them all in the uh, image here. I'm gonna rotate him a little bit because I can. I, I wanna get a little bit more of the tail in the image and I want the nose to be a little further from eye cast. So I'm gonna rotate, see, see I essentially don't want this, okay? That's essentially what I don't want. So I'm gonna rotate him the other way. I'm gonna rotate him to about right there. I might even move him up a couple pixels. I'm just using the arrow keys. 
And now I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the text and you're gonna see how fast this is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate that fish. I'm gonna give them a drop shadow, okay? I'm gonna duplicate the fish, select the bottom layer, hit the F button, which takes us to the effects. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, fill it with a color. I don't know what color I'm gonna use yet, but let's call it, let's call it, uh, let's just do pink because um, it kind of matches that fish. Now I'm gonna go and add one more effect, which is gonna be the blur. We're gonna Gaussian blur it. We're gonna increase the radius. Now you can see around the fish, there is a pink shadow and immediately I don't like the pink. So I'm gonna switch it. I'm gonna go through colors. Now it's yellow, mm, pretty popping. Green, doesn't stand out enough for me. Blue, barely shows up. Black, drop shadow. Black could actually do the trick here, but I was really liking that yellow. That yellow looked pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna duplicate that layer, right? I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna duplicate that yellow layer. I want it to stand out even more, maybe even more than that right there. So I'm gonna duplicate it one more time. Bam, she's popping, ladies and gentlemen. So again, I'm gonna select all those layers. I'm just holding the shift key as I click there to select all those. And I'm going to merge them. Oh, gosh, dang it, no, no, no. I gotta move this cam bubble again. Now I'm going to merge them. There you go, now we've got the fish. And essentially, I don't know if I need to do this for every little layer that I'm adding here today, ladies and gentlemen, but obviously you see what the thumbnail looks like right now. And all I'm gonna be doing from here on out is probably getting rid of me, potentially, and adding one or two more of those baits in this area right here. So whatever the thumbnail looks like today, you will have seen my decision. But basically, I'm gonna go back um, out of here and I'm gonna probably add a couple of these Guggen baits, maybe the fly reel, maybe the pen reel. I've got options here, right? I might add all of them, I don't know. I want them to, I don't want to be so much that it's just ridiculous, but I do want the, the the baits that I do put there or the reels that I do put there to be kind of like large enough for you to really get an idea of what they are. So I might get rid of me in order to do that because you know, some sometimes the thumbnail almost has to include the creator because that's what people really gravitate towards on the on the thumbnails. You think about Mr. Beast, he's always in the thumbnail. You think about Fishing with Norm, I feel like he's always in the thumbnail, very prominent, right? You think about me, I'm not always in my thumbnails. And it's like, for me, it's... In this case, in this video, it's like, why do I need to be there? I'm showcasing the best of show products, not me, who cares? But some folks probably do click on the thumbnail because they see the consistency. They're like, okay, this is a Weston video. I know this is a Weston video. I would like to see his take on it versus that person's take on it or vice versa. They don't want to see my take on it, right? They get the idea right up front. So that is why you may include yourself or not include yourself in your thumbnails. Already this looks decent, but I want to showcase that there's more than just this fish, okay? I want to showcase that there's reels. I want to showcase that there's variety. And so with that being said, that's how we make the thumbnails. I'm going to close this thing out right here and now. It's almost an hour long video. I love the fact that we're incorporating chapters. That way you folks can just skip straight to the subjects you want. It's been a blast filming these. And uh, of course, we're going to keep these continuous, but we have more fishing coming your way soon. All right. I got quite a few videos that we've already got filmed. I need to edit and we're going to have those up shortly, but this has been great. Uh, I'm glad we ran into the issue with the camera and the web bubble kind of popping away. That way I can, you know, I'm just more prepared for the next ones, right? More prepared for the next ones. And these iCast ones have been rather long because there's so much to cover. And yet this is stuff that needs to get out there. Everyone wants to know the information on that one specific product. And that's why I'm breaking it down and spending more time on them than usual. You know, most of my videos are not normally this long. And most of these fishing reports in the future probably will not be this long as we cover tournaments, as we cover uh, creators, as we cover the latest products, as we cover everything in fishing, okay? And so with that being said, you don't have to assume every video is gonna be an hour long. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get these between eight and 20 minutes, okay? Just with jam-packed with all the best information that y'all wanna know about on a regular basis. So if you made it this far, thank you so much. Please consider subscribing and uh, we're going to log off here and let y'all go about your day. Till next time, y'all. Peace out.